Coast. We've had him here in Huntsville. He's back again. Give it up for Mo Alexander! Yes! Bill, give it away, you got a medal. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. What up, people? How y'all doing? I'm back. I'm fucking alive and I'm back. I'm happy I'm here. Yay. What do you say was true? I died this year. I died, I died twice. Back in April, no bullshit. That is no bullshit. I had a blood clot. It moved. I died. Fuck everybody. All right, so no, no shit. No bullshit. The first time I died was uh, uh, April fifth. Now, if you don't know that date, if you don't remember what that date was. It was actually Easter. Um, so I died and came back like two minutes later, which makes me a much more efficient savior. So uh, seriously, none of the three day waiting bullshit. I came right back. I was like. Oh. It pissed me off when I died because when I first checked into the hospital, I had this fucking male nurse I was dealing with and he was just pissing me off the whole time. First of all, is there any male nurses in here? Please go fuck yourself in the face with a chainsaw because nobody likes your ass, okay? You're creepy angel of death motherfuckers, okay? No one wants you around, alright? I'm serious. Either get a degree and become a doctor or get a mop and start cleaning the floor. Stop touching me, you creepy fuck, alright? I hated it. One male nurse for seven. He was still. I checked in the hospital one. He was, he was uh, off at seven. The whole day he just annoyed the shit out of me. Just trying to be funny. Hey, you want to hear a joke? No. <laughs> Let's see. I can barely breathe. How about making me laugh? That'd be great. <laughs> and finally, like the hour before he was about to leave, he started fucking with me. He was like. So what's your relationship with Jesus? I don't think you're supposed to be asking me that question. <laughs> Why do you need to know? I'm just asking because you know if you're really close, you might be dying to I know you ain't supposed to be telling me that. <laughs> but I couldn't be mean to him because he's the fucking nerd. He's putting in all this stuff for me. I don't want him to accidentally kill me on fucking purpose. You know what I'm saying? And he's asking me, but, so I had to say the first thing that I could to not be too insulting, because most people ask me that, I couldn't go fuck themselves in the face with chains, all right? But I'm trying to be nice to him, I'm like, uh, I believe in reincarnation, and the last time I was here, I was a frog. <laughs> you know what he said to me, Julie? You know what he said to me? You going to hell! You going to hell! I'm like, I really know you ain't going to be telling me I'm going to hell. He's like, you need to be a Southern Baptist. Look, how the fuck are you trying to recruit a Southern Baptist and we're in a Methodist hospital, sir? Go fuck yourself in the face. <laughs> but he really told me I was going to hell, so when I died that first time, and if I had seen, like, gates and stuff, pearly gates or fire to hell, I would have been really mad because that motherfucker would have been right if I go to hell, right? So I didn't see anything. And people ask me all the time, did you see the gates? Did you see hell? No, I didn't see shit. I saw a dog. For two minutes, it was just dark. I did not see anything. I did hear something though. And this is no bullshit, this is not a lie. This is not God's honest truth. The only thing I heard in my state of dying was the chorus to Notorious B.I.G. <laughs> Notorious B.I.G. I love it when you call me Big Papa. That's all I heard. <laughs> that is no bullshit, man. I'm dead as hell. I'll, I'll wave your hands in the aisle if you're the true player. <laughs> No kidding about that. So I died the first time I died. The second time I died was like a week, a week and a half later. And uh, I, they didn't know, but I had pneumonia and like an infection in my leg and some of the stuff they fucked me up with. And uh, <laughs> so they sent in the PT people because they wanted me to sit up. And uh, they sent in this little 98 pound dude named Mikey. And I love Mikey. Apparently he lost a bet because he had to deal with me. And uh, what? I'm like, hey, Mikey was cool as shit. And he was like, hey man, I need you to sit up to the other side of the bed. I didn't feel good. I was not feeling, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. You can do this. I don't know. I feel really bad. You can do this. I have faith in you. You're my new savior. Uh, <laughs> and finally, like 10 minutes later, he gets me to sit on the side of the bed. And I'm like, yay. And he's like, yay. And I'm like, I feel bad. It's, no, I, it's okay. You can do it. I need to pee. It's okay. Go ahead. You're a cat, man. No, I don't. It just broke. 
and I peed all over Mike. <laughs> then I died. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Right after I peed on him, I dropped dead. <laughs> and you gotta look at me like I'm fucked up, but it makes me happy because that's the first time I ever peed on another adult when I'm not so when I'm completely sober. You understand me? That was. Yeah, I was that next time I died, I don't know what happened. I was out for three solid days. They had to put me in some kind of surgery and they just kept me sedated for three days. And I woke up on a Friday and I was like, I didn't know where I was. I had a ventilator in my throat. I couldn't talk. My hands were tied to my bed. I was freaking out. All I was with in the room, I didn't break down the room I was in. They moved me to a different room. There was this little bald black chick like a foot away from me on a computer, which freaked me the fuck out. I'm like, oh my God. I'm in the mirror versus Star Trek, and that's Black Figure. <laughs> if you get that joke, man, me and you fucking later on, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> and if you didn't remember, that was my ass you ate. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday. And I didn't recognize anybody in the room with me. Finally, my brother and my best friend came in, and then my aunt followed them, and they were like, oh my God, no, the wait. And my aunt is a crazy woman who I love to death. She's 60 something years old. She woke up, she walked over to me like, oh my God, no, you're awake. How do you, how do you like my Michael Jackson shirt? <laughs> he died on Propofol, and you're on it right now. <laughs> she said that to me. She said that to me. You know how hard it is to call somebody a bitch while you got a ventilator in? I'm over here like... Ah, 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 ah. He's trying to say something. You look like my shirt. <laughs> not kidding. I was, in the, I was in the hospital for 78 days. 78 days and then 13 days in rehab. And if you've never been to rehab, physical therapy rehab, let me tell you. It's just like jail, except they want you to get out. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was like the Michael Jordan of rehab. The basketball Michael Jordan, not the baseball player Michael Jordan. I was, that was everybody else. I was a shit. I mean, I'm like doing everything, like pushing weights. They're like, because everybody's like, you gotta do stuff, you gotta move, you gotta do really weird shit. Like, they had a five pound weight on a stick, and then you had to push it up a big board. The first time I saw it, I was like, nigga, please, this really? You, you, just give me my 20 pound weight, I'll be over, over here and back. And I was doing this, I was doing my own thing most of the time. But I tried to be nice to everybody I met in there. When I say it's like jail, it's not a joke. There's this one 70 some year old black man, mean as fuck. I don't know why, cause he had one dead eye, and that's the one he always looked at people with. When they had to hit you out, trying to do that stupid pegboard thing, he was next to me, across the way, just pushing his five pound weight back and forth. I'm like, hey man, how you doing today? He gave me this fucked up look, that look, get in jail, like, I want your shoe. <laughs> but his was, I want your leg. It was scary. <laughs> I'm happy to be out, I'm back and getting back on the road and doing comedy again. I got a lot of fucking things happening while I was in the hospital. Heard about the little Duggar boy. <laughs> Before I went to the hospital, I had some really fucked up stuff happen to me. And not look badly as something happened in the world, like people getting shot by the police and stuff. But I, got, I was going to South Carolina, and I got pulled over the third exit into the state. Seriously, I didn't mind my own business. Like, whoa, 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 Walks over to you. Walks over to me come over to the passenger side, and they always want you to think they're trying to be friendly on that passenger side. Let me tell you what they really do. They smell it for weed. But I always keep my weed and put a fat roll in my nutsack that they never find that shit. Stop looking. He comes over to me and starts talking, hey buddy, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> You know what, Pooja? Yeah, well, no, I did not. Well, I saw you looking at me, and I was looking at you. We looked at each other, and I had to show you over because you did, you did this little swerve thing. So I meant to make sure you weren't drinking the draft. Sir, I've been on the road for seven hours. I got three more hours to go. 
I have been sober since I left Knoxville four hours ago. Calm your ass down. <laughs> and got a little attitude, oh, you were sober then, but you, 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 you drove them sober now? Mountains tend to do that to you, sir. What can I do for you? He's from the lights of Where are you going? Myrtle Beach. Why are you going there? I'm a comedian. I had gigs. Really? Are you funny? And before I could say shit back to him, two other cops pulled up. I'm like, oh, fuck. They're taking three to take me down. Ferguson! Anyway, uh... <laughs> so, uh, he got like, yeah, I'm funny, I'm funny. You got anything on YouTube? Yeah, I got a lot of stuff on YouTube here. In my life, in very strange, you pick all that shit. So all three of them go back to the car, and they are in that fucking car for 20 minutes. At minute 15, I'm trying to remember the last time I was in South Carolina and how old was she? You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. The more you've grown, the darker I take this fucking show. You understand me? I'm not nice like the other people who've been up here. I am an asshole. I'm bad. I did not see it like, don't fuck with me. <laughs> 20 minutes go by, he comes back. Hey man, we looked you up on YouTube. You're pretty fucking funny. <laughs> You have YouTube and your police crew? The, the, the taxpayers know about this? So he lets me go and I go about my business. I do my gig that night. Now I don't even think about it until the next day when I'm cleaning out my car. And I look at the little warning ticket he gave me. He gave me a little warning ticket. It's like a warning. a warning. I'm like, all right, man. What's warning? What you warning about? And I'm reading the ticket and it has, you know, it has my name, my address, my birthday, all this shit information. And where it says normally, where it says uh, uh, race and ethnicity, he has written in B slash N. And he just abbreviated Big Nigga on my ticket. <laughs> I think he just put Big Nigga on my ticket. I swear to God. And I called one of my girlfriends to tell her, she's like, no, he probably meant that, you know, that's supposed to be an M for male. No, that's the next box. Oh, he just put big nigga male on his ticket. <laughs> Stop kicking the face. <laughs> I guess people get mad sometimes in my comedy they think I'm evil. Some people are like, oh, I had a woman get mad at me because she's like, and after, this is my third set of shows back since being in the hospital and dying on shit. And, uh, <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> First show back, some woman came to me, well you died because you do evil comedy. And I was like, I don't do evil comedy, I'm just dark and twisted, come on. You do horrible jokes about people, shut up bitch. And uh, I don't, I just tell the truth, which pisses some people off. Like my life is fucking good right now. I'm in a good place, got a new wheelchair. Oh, uh, y'all really want to see something funny? That as soon as I leave the stage, I want everybody to stand up and look down here. Cause they got a ramp that I think is too fucking angled, and I'm gonna go straight to the fucking wall. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't suggest you stand there, Tim. You gonna do what happened? They a lot of black men killed Tim at the comedy show by going 360 miles an hour down a ramp of two feet tall. I just want you to stand up and watch that. That's what fucking hilarious. Man in the town, you gonna pee yourself. That's what's gonna happen. Be all over yourself, hit the time, maybe get hurt a little bit. She, what, don't act like you don't like it. Anyway, uh, I'm in a good place. I'm in a mom. Right now, I'm dating two different chicks. They both know about each other. Okay, that's good. They know. In fact, one of them hooked me up to the other one. Yeah. One of them is 29, and the other is 50, 57. Yeah. Yeah, because I am 43 years old. And I'm at that point in my in life. I can date up or down 14 years. It's not too creepy. What? Only reason I'm with the 29 year old because I'm a math nerd. I want to see how many times 43 will go to 29. <laughs> you can roll it that if you want to, but if you know anything about math, that gives you an irrational number which makes perfect sense because that bitch is crazy, alright? <laughs> 15 year old, only reason I love her is she is, man, she. Some people are like, you got, she, oh, you can't, that, don't tell, don't, mm -hmm. that woman puts it down. That is some of the hottest sex I have ever had in my life. Plus, she was grandmother, so every time after we fuck, there are cookies. <laughs> yeah, I said that. You'll never live, sir, to be a pussy and cookies back to that. See, I'm not talking about some fucking chips or whore. I'm, oh, yeah, no! 
motherfucker brought the cookies with him. He brought his own cookies. That's a man. He's like, I'm getting the pussy tonight. I am getting the pussy. I don't care if she can't cook. I'm bringing my own cookies. I'm going to have her sitting on my face and throwing cookies at me. You prepared for the bitch. I'm fucking... Pussy and cooking. You had pussy and cooking. You know what I'm talking about. That's the best shit on the planet. Get some little fresh from scratch pussy cooking cooking. Laying in the bed, butt naked, she cooking. All you hear that, that smell of cookies coming in. Get wrecked all over again. You know cookies have made you hard before. You know it has. Mm -hmm. Is that cooking hands? You got to pee yourself on your birthday, ain't you? Let your pee be free, let your pee be free. I tell you, the 29 year old girl is just crazy. She's crazy. I meant that too. She's kinky. I mean, I don't mind kinky sex. I like it. In fact, I got a kinky myself. We wasn't that we were messing around. Okay, we were fucking. We were fucking. And unlike Richard, I like my belly just to sit on my ass. Okay? <laughs> Damn, you ain't going nowhere. You are staying in position. And she was kicking. She's also a white girl. She's like, choke me, choke me. I'm like, look, <laughs> yeah, this is set up. <laughs> do I need to put gloves on? Because I do not want to actually kill you on purpose. And I uh, have fingerprints left in you. No, but she likes to be choked. That's her thing. You ever, you ever, like, you ever, like, you ever been choked, man? You like it too? I don't know tell. <laughs> she likes to be choked on herself. So I'm over there choking her hardcore. Just hardcore choking her. <laughs> and then the song, Lauren Hill's Killing Me Softly, comes on the radio. <laughs> and I start laughing. <laughs> She's gurgling. <laughs> now see, you people understand, I'm telling you a true story, but it's also fun. <laughs> I did a Chicago Comedy Festival. That was my first show coming out of the hospital. I did like a week later. And a woman came and got in my face after one of She's like, I like your comedy until you did that great joke. I think you've been the white guy before me. No, it was you. You, you, you did the rape joke. I don't think rape jokes are funny. I don't do rape jokes. No, that's not my style. I don't do rape jokes. I make fun of people. I make fun of myself. I make fun of... I don't do rape jokes. You told her rape jokes. Rape jokes? Okay. Okay. I can see you can be a problem. <laughs> if you're so certain I told a rape joke, let me ask you a few questions, man. Where were you sitting when you heard this rape joke? Is that what you were wearing when you heard this rape joke? How many drinks had you had when you had this rape joke? Are you sure you didn't want a rape joke? And then change your mind after having the rape joke? See, you people have grown with me if you want to. You can, but you know, if a woman hears a legitimate rape joke, her body had a way of evacuating that rape joke. Before. My name is Mo Alexander.